Hi everyone, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Today we're going to make a little phone case. This is the next little project in our spring themed tidy up and organize series that's aimed at making sense of all the stuff and clutter we carry around in our bags with us. <laughs> Last week we made a travel tissue case and if you missed it we'll make sure that that's linked either up here or down there. This phone case, while not drop proof, <laughs> will help protect the screen of your phone from getting scratched by other little things that might be floating around in your bag. It ties shut too, so once you pop your phone in, it's not going to fall out. And even if you've already got a case on your phone, this makes it a nice little place for your phone to live while it's in your bag. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a little phone case together. I'm using a medium size 4 100% cotton yarn for this project. Cotton is strong and soft. Whatever yarn you choose, you're going to want to make sure it is something that has got a nice tight spin or weave to it and doesn't have any kind of fiber or bristle that is going to potentially scratch the outside of your phone. That's why I've chosen cotton. And because all of our phones are different sizes, you're going to want to have at least 50 grams or 100 yards of yarn in order to complete the project. You're also going to want a pair of scissors a yarn needle, and I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook. This is also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. You're also going to want your phone, and once you've got all that together, we can get started. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop, or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop, and also how to join, and there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. You're going to want to have your phone handy throughout this project, so I'm pretty sure it's close to you anyway. <laughs> But you want to make sure it's on hand so that you can continue to measure your case against it. And a very important note before we get started. If you're making your case for your phone and you don't already have your phone in some kind of case, that's fine, you're going to make this case to fit over your phone. But if your phone already has some sort of little protective case on it, or even one that closes over, leave it inside your case. You can crochet your crochet case to fit the entire thing. So it's just added protection for your phone. We're going to take our yarn and make a slip knot. We're all going to chain four to begin. Into that first chain, we're going to work two double crochet. So very carefully, two double crochet into that first chain we made. And then those other three chains are going to count as a double crochet stitch. So there's your chain four and you've worked two double crochet into that first chain. We're going to chain three. And into that same chain, it's going to look a little bigger, you're going to work three more double crochet. We should all have something that looks like this. And now we're going to continue. This is row two. We're going to chain three to begin. The chain three at the beginning of each of these rows in this first little part of our phone case counts as a chain, the chain three I should say counts as a double crochet. So when you turn your work and you see that first stitch there, you're going to skip it because the chain three counts as a double crochet and it's already accounted for. So you're going to skip over that stitch and double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the stitch after that. And that brings us up to that chain three space. Into this chain three space, we're going to work three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Once you've worked three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet into that space, you're going to work a double crochet into each of the tops of those two double crochet from the previous row, and that will bring you up to the top of the chain three, which remember, we're treating as a double crochet. So when you get to the end, there's your chain three, you're going to double crochet into the top of that chain three. So just jam your hook through the top of that chain three. 
And now we all have something that looks like this. So this is the little established pattern. This is why you want to have your phone case handy. Your phone might be really narrow, in which case the bottom of that work sort of fits along the edge. Maybe it hangs over it a little bit if it's really narrow, but chances are we're all going to need to do one more row. For our third row of this little triangle, we're all going to chain three and turn. You should all have six stitches here. So this is your first stitch. Your chain three counts as a double crochet. So you want to work at least five more double crochet. There'll be five double crochet to work before you get up to that chain three space. So there's my chain three. There's a double crochet worked into each of the other five stitches there. That brings me up to the chain three space. And we work three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet into that space. So there's three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all worked into that space. And now you should have six, so five actual double crochets and then a chain three, those all count as six stitches. You should have six stitches to work across. So that means six double crochets until you get to the end of row three of our little triangle. And there we are. That's three rows of a little triangle shape. So you should have nine double crochet across each side. So nine double crochet, a chain three, and nine double crochet. That includes your chain three. And then if you put this across the top of your phone case, it should come out the side a little bit. So you can sort of sit your phone case across it. You should have a little bit of overhang and that overhang should be able to come up on both sides of your phone. If it's still not wide enough, chain three, crochet all the way back. So double crochet all the way back to your chain three space, work three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, and double crochet in each one of those stitches, including the top of the chain three, to make a fourth row, in which case you'll have 12 double crochet on each side of that chain three space. So that's only if you need to do a fourth row. But if the bottom long edge of your little triangle fits over sort of the top and the sides of your phone case, then we're all ready to move on to the next step. We're gonna take our little triangle and we're gonna focus on this edge now. So the long edge, this is the edge, you might still have your little short tail hanging out and we're going to work across the top of it. So because we were using the double crochet stitch, each double crochet stitch is going to get the equivalent of two half double crochets worked across the edge. So here's your first stitch, that's the double crochet. We're not going, we're just going to chain one to kind of bring ourselves up, but this chain one turning isn't going to count as a stitch. We're going to work a half double crochet. So I'm going to try and kind of grab edges of the stitch here. So a couple pieces of the stitch working right through it. And another one. So that's two half double crochet worked along the edge of that first stitch. Then you come to what would have been a chain three. You're going to work two half double crochet along the edge of that. So you just want to kind of grab, grab a piece of chain stitches there we go then there's the next stitch at the end of row one which is a double crochet we're going to work two half double crochets across the edge of that stitch and you see when you work through the stitches you get a nice even edge there's no pulling and there's no gaps then we're all in the very center. That was that first chain we made. You're going to work one half double crochet into that. And then you're going to do the same thing out the other side. So you're going to work a half, two half double crochets across that chain three, two half double crochets across that double crochet stitch, and two half double crochets across the edge of your chain three. You might want to get your last one to sort of sit right at the very edge, but I'll catch up with you when you get there. All right, I've worked a half double crochet, two in fact, across the edge of each of those rows. So there'll be six 
one in the very center, seven, and then another six up the other side. I'm going to put my last half double crochet sort of right at the very edge. That's my little short tail that began the whole thing, so just ignore that. So you should have 13 half double crochet stitches across the bottom edge of your triangle. That's if you did three rows of a triangle. If you did four rows of a triangle, you'll have an extra four stitches. So we have 13. If you did four rows of the triangle, you'll have 17 stitches. But most of us probably have a triangle that looks like that. Now it's pretty easy from here on out. We're all going to just chain one, turn our work, Always ignore your little turning chain. The turning chain doesn't count now. And you're just going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So every row will have the same number of stitches. For most of us, that'll be 13. For some of you, that'll be 17. And you're going to continue to half double crochet in every stitch, chain one turn at the end of every row. And you're going to work on this sort of back and forth half double crochet stitch until this length of fabric from the edge of your triangle down is the same height as your phone. Well, I'll show you that when I get to it. I've crocheted another 15 rows of half double crochet. So we did the first half double crochet row across the edge of our triangle and now I've done 15 more. It doesn't matter how many you've got as long as your phone can sit inside that fabric and you can see those edges kind of come right up and over the edge which is just great. It's better to err on the side of a little wider than it is to be not wide enough. Uh, now that I've gone 15 extra rows. I know that's how many more rows again I have to add in order for this piece of fabric to be able to flip back up over top of my phone. So that's 15 rows for me. However many rows that is for you, you're going to double it now. So you're going to do another however many rows. 15 for me, it could be 14 for you, it could be 12, it could be 20, however long your phone is. What you want to achieve is a piece of rectangular fabric that can fold up nice and neatly with the bottom edge aligning across the bottom of your triangle. I've completed another 15 rows, so including the one I built across the bottom of our initial triangle, I have 31 rows of half double crochet. Each of my rows is 13 stitches long, or 13 stitches across. I pulled up on my loop, and now I just want to double check that my phone will fit inside if I fold up the fabric. So if you stretch it a little bit and you fold it up, you should be able to completely hide your phone inside the little case. And of course this triangle is going to eventually become the little fold over piece that keeps your phone from flying out the top. If it's not long enough, then go ahead and add another row or two, however many you need. But if it's long enough, like I said, with a little bit of stretch, it completely covers it. Then you've got enough rows of half double crochet. And now we're going to seam the entire thing together and work a little border all the way around. We want to bring the bottom of our long line of rectangle, so the bottom of our long rectangle, up to a line with just underneath that first row of half double crochet we made. So you don't want to cover it, you want it to just sort of sit along the bottom of it. Now we don't want to chain one at the end of our last row, so if you did chain one, carefully take that chain one out, you don't need it. What we're going to do is start to crochet all the way up the edge of our little triangle. And the first thing we're going to do is work a single crochet right into that, so this is probably where you worked a half double crochet, this little space right here. You see all of the actual stitches start? You want to just basically begin your seam by working a single crochet into that first space. That's just to sort of anchor up the piece of fabric. Then you can skip to the next stitch. You're going to work a single crochet into the top of each one of those double crochets all the way up the edge of your triangle. Now this triangle will probably have nine double crochets in it for most of us, this sort of side of the triangle. It might be 12 if you had to make a bigger triangle. It doesn't matter. You just want to work a single crochet in the top of each of those stitches so it looks nice and even. When you get up to the chain three space, you're going to work two single crochet four chains and two single crochet. So two single crochet, chain four, 
two single crochet and that gives you just a little extra loop at the top there. And then make sure you don't miss the top of that first single cro or the first crochet stitch you need to work into. You're going to work a single crochet into the top of those nine stitches or 12 down the edge the other side of your triangle and I'll catch up with you in a second. Once you've worked a single crochet into the top of each of those double crochets all the way down the other side of your triangle, it's time to join the other edge of our rectangle. And this will be the edge of that first half double crochet row you worked. You're going to grab the top of the last stitch of your row. Now that would have been the first stitch of your last row, I should say. It'll be a little bit small and you're going to stick your hook through the side of that half double crochet row and you're going to single crochet. And now you've joined it. So you should have both of the top edges joined together now in two open sides. So just to recap, you should be joined at both tops. You should have a nice neat row of single crochet running up and down both sides of your triangle with another nice loop in the top. That's the top part done. Now all we want to do is single crochet a seam down the first open side of our case. And you're going to do this by just grabbing pieces of the sides of stitches of each row and single crocheting. There is no set number of stitches. We all have a different number of rows. You just want to work a single crochet, making sure that you get through both pieces of fabric. Just put your hook through the stitches right where it feels natural. So wherever you think the next stitch should go. Pull back every once in a while. Make sure that you're not accidentally missing one side or the other. Make sure that it lies nice and flat. It doesn't look like it's buckling, like you're working too many or too few stitches. And if you have to, you can just Take the time to put your hook first through one side and then jam it through a piece of a stitch on the other side. There is no fine science to this. Just work your way at single crocheting a little seam down the edge. It will look really neat and tidy on both sides and it will provide a nice solid seam. I've worked single crochet through both sides of my case down that first row or that first side I should say. Looks nice and neat and tidy. I'm at the bottom now and I'm going to single crochet all the way across the bottom. This will give the bottom a little added strength and it doesn't, it allows you to not have to cut your yarn and then rejoin your yarn. So we're just going to keep going in a solid row. There are probably lots of little things that you could use as a guide to work your single crochets through. I'm just going to use the little bits of stitches that show up in between um, or those little loops. I'm just going to try and use the same thing every single time. And there should be 13 all the way across. I'm not going to work extra stitches in the corner. I'm just going to round the corner and keep going. And I'm just going to use these little loops that sort of are part of the stitches from that particular row. It doesn't matter what part you use. You can work right through the fabric. You can use just a couple of simple loops. Whatever you think you like the look of better. So that's what it looks like if I'm just using a piece, the same piece of a stitch as I work all the way across. And because I had 13 stitches, there should be roughly 13 of these worked across the bottom. But it doesn't really matter as long as it looks nice and even. And that brings me up to the other side. So now I'm going to keep take care to make sure that I keep my two edges even. And I'm just going to do what I did on the other side. I'm going to make sure that my hook gets through both pieces of fabric, both sides. And I'm just going to work at single crocheting up the other seam and making sure that it looks pretty much even to the other side. Stitch count doesn't matter, whatever looks nice and even. When you get back up to the top, make sure that you haven't missed any parts of your seams so you can sort of stick your hand in there and there are no little gaps. 
you can just join with a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet you made and then fasten off. You can grab your yarn needle and take a moment to weave your tail in. You can weave it in underneath sort of some of these easy to grab stitches up here or you can just flip up the inside edge of your case and weave it in back and forth underneath some of the stitches along that last row of half double crochet. Remember to weave it back and forth a few times just to make sure that it stays put and doesn't want to unravel on you. left is to make a little tie. So I recommend you put your phone inside your case and then you pull your your little triangle down over top of it and figure out where you want your little sort of join to be. Where it's going to make sure that your triangle is pulled down nice and snug. I think right about here would be good. So I'm just going to mark that stitch with my yarn needle. I'll take my phone back out. And now I'm going to do some chaining. So I'm going to grab my yarn again. I'm going to start with a slip knot. I'm going to chain 20 to begin. All right, I've chained 20. That's a fairly decent length. That's about 15 centimeters or six inches. And now I'm going to just slip my hook or my stitch marker out of there. And I'm just going to slip my hook underneath that stitch making sure that it's sort of it's definitely kind of in the middle so that my thing isn't going to be pulled to one side or the other that's a nice middle stitch I'm going to slip stitch to that middle stitch there we go so now I've connected my chained length and now I'm going to chain another 20 out the other side Once you've chained 20, you can snip your yarn, fasten off, make sure the two little tails on either side of those little chains are nice and tight, and then you can trim them up. So I'm going to hold them both together and then just trim them so that they match. And now you've got a simple little built-in tie. So you can put your phone into your little case, run the tie through that top loop, so just one side, and then you can tie a nice little knot or a little bow. And now your phone isn't going to come out the top, and there's a little added protection so that it won't bump into stuff in your purse. And there you go, one nice little phone case. It's a cute place for your phone to live while it's banging around inside your bag, and it does make it easier for you to find it when you're reaching in there, trying to find your phone when it's ringing. That is the second little project in our spring-themed Tidy Up and Organize series. You'll also find our travel tissue case linked in the description box down below if you want to check that out too. It does make a nice little set. We've got a couple more coming in this series, but next week it's the next installment in our 2020 calendar blanket, so stay tuned for that. We hope you had fun making this along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaded Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everyone. This is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.